Hi, today we'll be unboxing a TP-Link, an AX3600, that is an access point, and I'm going to be going through some of the features and how you'd want to set these up. Now, there's a whole lot of different brands. I did a video in the, quite a long, long time ago about Open Mesh. that was quite popular. Uh, this is a replacement for that, as Open Mesh no longer exists. It's been absorbed by a company called Dato. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at what's in a box from TP-Link and Access Point. Uh, before I get much further, actually, um, let me explain what a, an access point is. So perhaps you have no idea what the difference is between an access point and a router. Uh, typically, if you've got a very small environment, home, small office, you would have a router that would have Wi-Fi built in. And what that would do is it plugs to the internet and through various uh, pieces of technology and configurations, we'll have an IP address externally and give you IP addresses internally. When you have a larger environment, or if you've got a, I guess you could use these in the home as well, if you've got a larger environment, what you want is not a router, you want to have access points. So these are Wi-Fi 6, and they will allow you to have multiple access points within your offices. So you can have, you know, 2, 3, 10, however you need. You space them out, and the idea is that you can, let's say with an iPhone or with a laptop computer, if you're on Wi-Fi, you can go around the office and it will switch you from one access point to the other as you move along. You won't lose connectivity, so you'll always get a decent signal no matter where you are. So of course you wanna space these out appropriately so that you get the maximum amount of coverage. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up and of course, consider subscribing. We really appreciate that, it helps us out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual unit itself. So this is an access point as I mentioned, and since it is Wi-Fi, uh, 6 and another word for Wi-Fi 6 is 802.11ax so this replaces the 802.11ac which was the old uh, I guess they call it Wi-Fi 5 now so let's go ahead and take this plastic off and as you can tell obviously it's going to look like a hockey puck from the picture and inside of here, you will find cardboard. So unlike some of the other brands, this has some environmental, uh, I guess, thought to it. So you've got a booklet. It's a little more than some of the other brands that we've seen. And really what it does, it gives you a bit of how to install it, what your network topology should be, and how to mount it on a wall or a ceiling. So inside of the box, you will have the main unit and you'll see there's not much to this it's quite large it's actually much larger than I expected but uh, so it looks like a gigantic hockey puck potentially so it's really not much to see on the side apart from ventilation you'll see there's really not much and when you get to the bottom or really the back of it you're gonna notice two ports so you're gonna notice one which is it looks like Ethernet uh, in this case, it actually has a 2.5 uh, megabit Ethernet capable on there. And the other one is actually for 12 volt, 2 ampere connector, which by the way, you can plug it in using power. So here's a little adapter that gives you 12 volts. And before I get more into that, let's see what else there is. There is the little mount here for this is basically to mount it on a ceiling and you've got these screws that go with it. So that's all there is. Now let's talk about the access point. Um, with Wi-Fi 6, the whole point is you're supposed to be getting more, um, more density really, I guess is what it boils down to, if I can uh, dumb this down. So you'll get a better signal, but you'll also be able to have more units connected to the access point. So what would happen is if you have a very dense environment, for example, if you have hundreds of employees or more, of course, and you have uh, cubicles, perhaps, everybody's got a phone, a tablet, a laptop, it does get very saturated. You should see some improvement with this type of device. There's more than uh, one antenna in there, so they'll be able to, uh, to basically uh, have more clients connect at the same time. Also, the way that it uh, hops from client to client, the way it services the actual connections is different, it's improved. 
So I'm not going to get into it because uh, it's the whole point is not to be too technical here, but just to show you what it is and what the use is. Now, when you plug these in, uh, I did mention that obviously you've got your Ethernet that goes in. You're going to need power, so you can either go with the provided adapter or if you want in a large environment traditionally you would have uh, a switch so this is a very very small one this is a, a five port switch but this has it's a five port uh, gigabit it says with four poe plus so that's power over ethernet what that means is the power obviously this needs power this will be powered plugged in and the ethernet ports from this device four of them will actually send power to access points or if you have cameras or something else. So in other words, if I plug in the ethernet cable from this to the access point, it would be powered. I would not need the power adapter. Why do I care? Well, perhaps you're putting this on a ceiling and it's, it's easier and uh, less work just to pass a single ethernet cable to the unit than it is to somewhere in the ceiling find power for it. So that's one way to do it. If you don't have one of these switches, you can get small ones. Uh, you can also get large ones. Let me show you uh, one of the larger ones. Okay. This one here is extremely heavy. Uh, so this is a Juniper Networks. Uh, most brands do PoE plus uh, switches. So in this case, it's basically instead of having just the four ports, you've got 24 on this one. And as you can tell, some of these, when you go into the high end, the whole point is it has a dual power supply. Uh, so if you're in a large or medium sized enterprise, what you want is you want to make sure these things are as durable and available all the time. So what you could do is you could have, because it has two power supplies, you could have one on one UPS and one on the other. So basically a power supply uh, with a battery. Or in some cases, if you only have a single uh, battery, you could plug one into the wall, one into your uh, APC, for example, um, power supply. All right, so the third option that you have to power these would be to get what they call a, an injector. So what this does is it will allow, basically this plugs in. So again, it, it's gonna need power. But what you do is you take from an ordinary switch that doesn't have PoE, you take the ethernet, put it into one of these two ports they have in there. Of course, it will be identified which one is the, when it comes in, then it, what it does, it takes the ethernet and pushes not only the ethernet signal back out, it also pushes power back out. So you could have this in your server room or wherever your, your cables are, and then you would need a single ethernet cable again, going from this injector back to the access point. So if you have a few of these, and you don't happen to have a PoE or PoE Plus, uh, again, check which standard you have. It's 802 dot, what is it, 3, I think it's AT is the, the latest one, or AF is the, the one prior. So you want to make sure that you understand what kind of wattage this requires and make sure that you get the proper either injector or that you have a PoE Plus because that's the latest one with more wattage. So that's roughly how that works out. So in future videos, we'll take a look at what kind of manageability that you can get uh, for these things. So there, there's uh, different ways of managing. Uh, there's units you could put on site. If you have a whole lot of these, you probably want to get a special unit to control them. And of course, it gives you statistics. You can see, uh, you know, who's going where and what's happening, how much bandwidth you're using and so forth, how many clients you have. And so we'll be able to take a uh, look at that in future videos. And um, that's about it. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, uh, please go ahead and give us some comments, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like. If you have other ideas as to what we can cover, we appreciate those. And uh, please visit us at www.ctobob.com. I'm Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob, of course, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.